Okay, this is going to be a video about how AgOpenGPS parses the NME data coming in and what happens to it when it gets in AgOpenGPS and why it's critical that the baud rate and everything would be just plain fast enough. So here we have a 10 hertz signal coming in from the GPS and we have it set to 10 hertz and that's our cycle time of around three or five seconds millisecond sorry and what it does the NMEA sentence comes in this is gonna be a terrible video just warning everybody there's a lot to talk about and a lot going on so this watchdog timer within the GUI it triggers every 10 milliseconds like 0 0.01 seconds which is really fast and it runs this part this function and the timer is automatically set up and it just no matter where it is in the program, <clears throat> the timer fires, and this runs. So the first thing it does is it disables the, the watchdog timer so that it doesn't keep triggering every 10 milliseconds because then it would just run this function all the time, round, round, round. So we have to disable that timer initially. Then what we need to do is we need to scan for an NMEA to see what the signal is. So we can go to that go to definition of the scan for NMEA. So what this does is every 10 milliseconds it now goes and scans it. Now the this string builder there's two ways to make strings in C sharp. You can either make just a normal string but if you take say the word is Bob and you want to add Miller when you add Miller to Bob it recreates a new string. Uh, a string builder, what it does is it just, like an array or that sort of thing, it just appends on the end of it and doesn't create a new one over and over. It's like an, an array of letters. So that's very different. So what it does is it scans for a new NMEA, but, and here's the big but, at the same time, we have serial data coming in on our serial port. On our serial line received and this serial line it's multi-threaded so the the USB or the serial port part of system IO dot ports so serial data received event args when it sees data at the port then this is triggered and this is like just like a timer trigger or any when you push a button that sort of thing you have an action and now if the port is open we read what's existing on the port, and because this is in a separate thread, we have to invoke a handler called serial line received. And what does it do? It takes that little chunk of information and adds it to our string, and any from GPS, and adds it to the string. So it could be like $GPGG. And then that's it. And then PA, yada, 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 the rest of the sentence comes in in little chunks and it keeps adding on to that bit by bit by bit. So let's go back to position. So that keeps accumulating. So let's go back to the position designer. Now if the string coming from, from the, um, the port is empty, there's no point doing this. Or if we're saving a file, that means we're busy. So just return, don't do an update, that sort of thing. Every 180 seconds we save files, save everything. So now we have to take our raw buffer. Our raw buffer is used by the NMEA decoder to build up a sentence and it just keeps accumulating until we have a sentence. So we take all of that information, that those little chunks that keep getting added up every 10 milliseconds, we dump all those into the raw buffer. And then also, because we don't actually know what's coming from the buffer and because we keep deleting everything, I found it really hard to figure out how to display what's being um, received from the, from the port. <sighs> so now the raw buffer gets dumped into the receive settings because the raw buffer will keep accumulating until it actually has a sentence. So then once it's in the raw buffer, then we clear it and now we can go to our NME A code and parse that information. So if the raw buffer is empty, return. If it 
doesn't have the end of a sentence, return. If it doesn't have the start of a sentence, return. If the dollar sign isn't first, or if it's last, then get rid of it and return. Um, then you have to, is there a return? Is there a dollar sign? You have to check that again, because you may have deleted it. If the, um, if the dollar sign isn't first, then you have to get rid of the tail of a corrupt sentence. And if, what is this one? Again, if there's no uh, a new line character, then you return. So it, is, it just keeps checking for weird sentences, out of form sentences, just noise, garbage, that sort of thing coming in on the NMEA. So once we have a full sentence, then we get to here and then we parse it. What kind of sentence is it? And from there we can, like here's a basic parse. So now we have to take and remove the, the checksum from the string and the GP, GGA and all that other stuff. And then we figure out what it is, and then we parse it. And then that's where all this information comes in for your latitude, longitude, you know, what fixed quality satellites, HGA, altitude, all that sort of thing. And then we say, ah, updated GGA equals true. We're going to use that in a bit. But remember, v VTG and these other ones, they're not fixes. So we don't want to do a display update with just adding speed. So we just take that information and just store it for the time being. Same with uh, with the true heading, like from dual antenna. All we want to do is just store the heading. Okay, hope that makes sense. So now, even if there's one, two, or whatever sentences, uh, where are we here? So while it's true, and while there's still sentences, we lump through and quickly um, parse them all. And then we return back again. So now we have all of our sentence parsed and possibly a GGA that has been parsed. So now we say if the, P the GGA has been updated or the OGI has been updated or RMC has been updated, then we stop our frequency counting and we go do the entire um, frame doing all the calculations, doing all the updates, doing all the drawing, doing the auto steer calculations, U-turn calculations, all that sort of stuff gets, that's done. And then our receive cover, that's a little green line, it's a little green point down on the bottom here. Um, that gets up if that, if it gets too high, that means it doesn't have any more, any new GPS signals. So that thing, every time you get one, it keeps counting up. And remember, the first group of uh, of GPS data is corrupt, or it's it's not where you want to be, and the heading's all wrong. The first fifty positions get um, just used and average, and try to figure out your position. And in the meantime, you return false. Otherwise, you uh, you just return true. Whew. All the while, the UPN is broadcasting. The GPS port is in it, its own thread. It's broadcasting and receiving. And the um, relay port is also broadcasting and receiving. And the auto steer USB is also in its own um, thread, broadcasting and that sort of thing. So once we come back, we come back to here and we return. So if it returns true, back in the GUI, back in this watchdog. So if this was true, now we start doing our counting. So as you know, you can have different fix updates. You can have five hertz, eight hertz, 10 hertz, whatever. So then like the one second counter, like guys were talking about the entry, my counter is counting really slowly. Well, if you have a uh, fix update of 10 hertz, this thing has to run 10 times before it's one second because 10 hertz is 0.1 second. 10.1s is one second. So that's the first clue is that if the one second stuff isn't counting at one second, you've got a problem. So you have all these counters, three second counter, one second, half second, and then although it's called fifth, it's actually real time counters. And then you have all of these um, conditions. If the one second counter, then you do all of this stuff with the data. Uh, a 
update the screen. You know, here's Ntrip. Are we connecting? Is it is there a connection? Sending authorization. Is Ntrip required on? Authorizing, waiting. You have to do all of these things like once per second. Again, if your timing is off or if you've set to 5 and it should be 10 or you've set to 10 and it should be 5, it will screw up all the interval timing. It all depends on that stuff. So once you get an updated fix, you get a new frame, you update everything, and you come back. At the very bottom of this now, what do we got to do? We turn our watchdog timer back on. So hopefully that's happened if it's 5 hertz. Hopefully all of this has happened within 200 milliseconds. So we can start again, get the new NMEA code and start again. At 10 hertz, this has got to be done in 100 milliseconds. So now we enable the timer again. Go back up to the top here. And wait for another trigger. And then we scan for a new NMEA. If there's a new position, we do a frame update. If not, we just add a little bit of information that came in and just wait until we have a whole sentence. So all of this is all going on at the same time and it's got to work. So if you start dumping a whole bunch of GPS data into this at a really slow rate, you can see how it will really mess it up. So if you just have GGA and VTG coming in at at least 19,200 baud and minimize the sentences, then uh, it'll just work. Because if you're using Ntrip, you also have to broadcast out that USB port as well. That's what the Ntrip part does. And uh, it just can't get all of that information out the port fast enough. So I hope that gives a bit of an understanding of what's going on when NMEA comes into Ag Open GPS. So, okay. Thank you.